In this video, we're looking at the OpenVPN Data Channel Offload or OpenVPN DCO. We're looking at what it is, how to enable it on Access Server, and we are going to look at the user experience before you enable OpenVPN DCO and after you enable OpenVPN DCO. These days, ensuring safety online is a crucial aspect to consider. The more we can secure our digital interactions through encryption, the more valuable they become. Historically, data encryption has had uh, the side effect of reducing computing speeds, but advancements in modern CPUs have mitigated this issue, but we still have room to improve. OpenVPN has recently introduced a feature designed to enhance the speed for its users by relocating the data channel to the kernel space. This innovation is known as OpenVPN Data Channel Offload or OpenVPN DCO. But first, let's look at what are the kernel and user spaces. So the kernel space and user space refer to different regions in the memory layout of a computer's operating systems. These are distinct areas utilized to run different types of software processes. Here's a brief explanation of both. Kernel space is a memory area where the core of the operating system runs and provides its services. This space is reserved for running the kernel, kernel extensions, and most device drivers. In this context, the kernel is the essential center of a computer's operating system, the core that provides basic services for all other parts of the operating system. User space, on the other hand, refers to the memory area where application software and some drivers execute. When you run an application like a web browser, a text editor, or a game, it is executed in a user space. User space applications have restricted access to memory, and they have to uh, make system calls to the kernel in order to perform lower level tasks that interact with the hardware. Since the OpenVPN is a user space application, data channel traffic must cross the kernel space and user space boundary, which causes a decrease in performance. As you can see on this slide, we see the packets are coming from internet through our Ethernet zero, which is our network interface. So when the packet comes in, it needs to go to the user space, so OpenVPN can process the packet, which means to decrypt the packet since traffic through this tunnel is encrypted, and possibly to do some kind of routing, so sending it back to the kernel space, and then to either tunnel zero and finally to the user space, again to the application, or send it back to the internet. So exchanging data, um, between these two layers cost processing power, which introduces a bottleneck uh, for OpenVPN speed. The implementation of OpenVPN Data Channel Offload or OpenVPN DCO has resulted in a Linux kernel module responsible for managing the OpenVPN data channel. This is just a virtual device driver in the Linux kernel that implements the OpenVPN data channel. As a result of this implementation, the need for OpenVPN to transmit data traffic between user and kernel space for routing and encryption decryption has been eliminated. Now, all operations in involving payloads happens uh, within the kernel space and enhancing performance. So what, happen in, uh, what happens in DCO is that packets arrive uh, in the OpenVPN DCO kernel module both data and control packets, and then control packets are transferred to um, the OpenVPN process as they were before. So the OpenVPN process listens on a port for, for VPN packets and receive those, but data packets are filtered away in a kernel directly and don't arrive at the OpenVPN process anymore, but are decrypted and encrypted in the kernel and sent to the relevant network interface directly without even touching the OpenVPN process in the user space. So this eliminates the delay and costs associated with transferring payloads between user and kernel space. Let's look and see how we can enable this CO. As you can see, I'm on the admin user interface of our access server. So a minimum version required in order to be able to en enable uh, this CO is 2.12. Um, as you can see, my access server here, the version is 2.12. Point zero, so it meets the minimum requirement. Before I do anything, I want to show you the user experience when the CO is not enabled. Let's look at uh, under our user management. We have one user on this access server, Ella, and we're going to connect with Ella's account so we can see uh, what happens. 
Let me type the password, click OK, and Ella is connected. Here we go. So I have a server on that private network where the access servers is installed. So I'm going to connect to that server. Let me bring my run box here, and I'm going to type the IP address. And as you can see, the IP address is already there. So let's click OK. And I'm going to type the username and password so I can get connected to the server. And here we go. Click OK. And as you can see, I have a shared folder here. If I double click on the shared folder, you can see I have another folder and another file there. Now, I have a folder on my local machine here with a lot of videos. I'm going to transfer those videos to that new server or copy that folder. Let's look at the properties. It's over seven gigs of uh, data here. So I'm just going to copy to the server and see what happens. So as you can see, the uh, connection status on our client app shows five megs per second. And then uh, on the windows also shows about uh, two to four megs per second. Now, if we wait for a few seconds for the connection to stabilize, we can see what happens to our connection status. And uh, I'm just gonna fast forward through this part. So still five megs per second is our connection status. And on the Windows machine shows about uh, four to five megs per second as well. And as you can see, it's a little bit, a little bit over two minutes and we are at 3% uh, transfer. So I'm gonna disconnect this. I'm gonna uh, disconnect from uh, the access server. Let's close this folder and we're gonna enable, uh, enable uh, the DCO. As I mentioned earlier, the minimum version needs to be 2.12.0. That's a minimum version of access server. Now, in order to enable this, first we need to install the DCO on our access server. So if you go to our website, openvpn.net, and you search for DCO, the very first link, how to enable OpenVPN DCO is the one that we want to go. If you scroll down, there is a section that uh, titled with install DCO from the console. So if you look at it, there are a few commands that we need to run. I'm going to connect um, to my access server. As you can see, I have a, an SSH session going on. So I'm going to just copy and paste these commands. Uh, first, we're going to run the um, update and then upgrade. Uh, let's finish that. And then finally, we need to reboot. And here we go. The system is rebooted. Now we're going to run uh, the last command, which is uh, installing OpenVPN DCO. So here we go. We copy this command, and I'm going to paste it in the console again and let it run. OK, it's completed. So let's head back to the admin UI to finish. On admin UI, expand configuration and click on advanced settings. The first option is open VPN data channel offload. Toggle the switch to yes, and then you need to scroll down to the bottom of the page and click on save settings. Once the settings is saved, then you click on update running server to update the server. And here we go, our running server is updated. Now we need to enable DCO on the client app. So click on the menu, go to settings, and you have to scroll down to the bottom of the page and expand advanced uh, settings. And then you can see enable DCO is uh, available. So I check that box to enable it. One more thing you need to pay attention, that's a security level. If by default is set to legacy, you won't be able to connect, you get an error message. Make sure you select preferred and recommend it. So change the security level, and then you're good to go. We're gonna go ahead and connect with the LI again. This time, DCO is enabled, and we're gonna see what happened to our transfer or copying data across the network. So we are connected. Again, I got my folder with a lot of videos here. I'm gonna connect uh, to the server again. Here we go. Double click on the shirt, and I'm gonna get rid of the folder that I was trying to copy earlier. Uh, now, let's go ahead and uh, look at this folder. Again, this is the same folder, same amount of data, 7.7 .7 gigs, and we're going to copy that across to the network, uh, to the server. So let's look at the uh, connection status now. And as you can see, the connection stats shows about 14 megs per second right away. And on the Windows server, it shows about 
11 to 13 megs per second. So we're going to wait for a few seconds again for the connection to stabilize and see what happens. So I'm going to fast forward through this part and then we'll come back in a minute or so. So it's been a couple of minutes. Uh, the connection stat uh, still shows 30 megs per second. So it's been the same. It goes a little bit up and down, but not that much. So you can see by enabling DCO or data offload, uh, data channel offload, uh, what happens to the performance. Uh, obviously, big difference. We're a little bit over two minutes, and we already 14% uh, transfer. So I'm going to disconnect from here. This was a quick summary of um, OpenVPN data channel offload, how to enable it, and the user experience. Thank you very much.